Before generating a conventional neural network and using MNIST dataset, uh, I will just mention a few things about our dataset and generating uh, CNNs. MNIST dataset, which consists of handwritten digital objects, has a total of 70,000 gray level images. What gray level means that uh, every image has a, a single channel and uh, each image contains uh, 28 by 28 pixels. Pixels uh, can have a value from um, 0 to uh, 255 and this value represents pixels intensity level uh, 0 equals to fully black pixel while uh, 255 equals to a fully white one. Uh, 600 images from the entire dataset are separated for training and the rest uh, 10,000 uh, images are for the test. And this dataset has uh, 10 different classes that belong to uh, numbers from 0 to 9 and actually in this dataset uh, is one of the easiest dataset you can work with because MNIST uh, dataset have no background and every sample is centered there isn't any variety inside the classes so it is it is easier to distinguish samples uh, like which one is 3 or which one is 7 and etc um, just to summarize why MNIST dataset one of the easiest uh, dataset you can work with. Uh, uh, first, there is no background, samples are centered, no variety inside the classes, uh, no different angles or views, uh, 28, 28 by 28 pixels, uh, which we can consider as a low dimensional compared to other applications. Uh, as we understand our dataset, uh, we can now we can move on to CNNs or conventional neural networks. Uh, there's a wide range of different machine learning algorithms you can choose to work with. Uh, deep learning algorithms are one of those, and CNNs are certainly a deep learning algorithms, uh, just like RNNs or LSTMs. Uh, as you may know, deep learning algorithms are used for extracting useful patterns from data automatically. Other classic machine learning algorithms like artificial neural networks, support vector machines, um, decision, decision trees, or key nearest neighbors need uh, feature extraction steps. And only after that related network can use given features to classific classification or regression. Uh, but deep learning algorithms helps to minimize human intervention. Uh, feature extraction is done by networks itself. Uh, if you want to basically summarize CNNs, uh, we can say that it is a combination of uh, feature extraction and classic machine learning algorithms. Um, CNNs are widely used for finding patterns in images or object detection. It can be easily said that uh, CNNs are famous for image classification problems. Um, CNN models can be roughly separated as two parts. Uh, first part is convolution layers for obtaining features from our da data and the second part of CNNs is uh, a classic densely connected feedforward neural network structure. Uh, feedforward neural network determines the class of a given input um, and as we summarize uh, CNN architecture generally we can say that the uh, purpose of including conventional layers is to obtain features of given input sample there can be more than one convolutional layer with more than one filter with different sizes at each layer uh, or we can call those, call those um, filters, filters as kernels. Now um, let's examine our CNN step by step using a MATLAB DIT network designer. Um, let me open um, DIT network designer. I have already created my uh, CNN before and I'm not going to create it from zero here but I'll show you how you can do it by yourself. When you click on the deep network designer uh, you will have this page. Uh, you can, If you don't have any um, model you need to click on a blank network 
you will start with a blank page but right now I have already generated my CNN so I'm just gonna import it as I said if you click on the uh, nib you'll just have a blank space and you can uh, generate your own just clicking those related uh, parts like this so let's analyze our CNN and we first start with uh, image input and as we said uh, MNIST dataset contains uh, 28 by 28 and single channel uh, gray level images so we just write here uh, the pixels values for our input and we declare that our inputs are uh, single channeled then we have a convolutional layer the, inside this convolutional layer uh, we have a total of uh, 33 uh, 32, I'm sorry, 32 uh, different filters or uh, kernels and each kernel has a size of uh, 3 by 3 you can think of uh, like little windows that operates on our input images then we have a rel layer and pooling layer a uh, pooling layer, what a uh, pooling layer does? Um, pooling layer helps to uh, helps our a model to focus on uh, more related features uh, after that we have a, we are we have um, our first uh, layer neural network layer uh, which consists of uh, 64 neurons then we have a dropout layer then we have second and last of our last layer of our um, neural network we have a softmax layer and uh, classification layer out sizes as you can see here, as you can see here is 10 why because our MNIST dataset have 10 different classes from 0 to 9 that's why we uh, write here that's why we have 10 here after you can after you generate your own um, CNN model you can export it you can uh, either export it to a workspace or you can generate your code I'll just click on to generate code um, we are um, yeah after you clicked a uh, generate you just have this raw raw um, code here you can use it to uh, your you can use it for any applications you want to I'll just I'll, I'll just uh, copy it from here no I need to save this one so uh, we can use our dataset we can use our CNN model uh, first we load our dataset here and as you can see let me where is the test um, the test contains the first column uh, represents uh, class labels like uh, our first sample is a 7 uh, second sample is 2 uh, third sample is 1 and it goes on like this the first column represents uh, class labels and the other columns uh, represents our pixel values if it I can um, where is it where is it yeah up, uh, for example for this uh, port sample uh, you can see different pixel values okay um, like as, as I said our first column represents labels and the rest represent images uh, after we have the labels and images uh, first step is normalization normalization process let us have pixel values between 0 and 1 uh, after that right now we have a row vector uh, we need to transform that reshape that to 28 by 28 samples uh, why are we doing that because um, when we are generating our CNN we declared that 
uh, our input is 28 by 28 and single channels so that is the reason why why we are reshaping our image we are do the uh, next we are going to do the same steps for training and then uh, we have our CNN right here our input layer combination layer uh, activation layer pooling layer uh, you can have uh, more than one uh, combination layer uh, you can have different pooling layers and etc uh, you can tune these parameters and after that uh, we need to specify how are we going to um, train our CNN I'm just gonna use stochastic gradient descent with momentum optimizer and here we train our network we train our CNN then we do some classifications with uh, test data and after all the steps are done uh, we're just gonna see the accuracy of our CNN model so um, let me just start my code um, before that let's clear everything let's run the code we may need to uh, wait for a while As you can see, our model starts to train itself with a train dataset, and just like we want, uh, accuracy just keep increases while loss value keep uh, decreases. Which with each epoch, model model uh, just uh, training right here um, we don't need to wait for it to compete I'm just gonna stop it by myself And after that we're gonna yeah we just get we just got our accuracy level it shows that our uh, CNN uh, operates with accuracy 